everybody. Happy Word Up Wednesday. My name is Lauren Frischman and I am the resident director for Baker and Roush Hall. And I'm also our director of student programming here on campus. And thanks for joining me here in my living room. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing with all of you today um, what Jesus has been teaching me and what's been on my heart. Um, so I'm going to read a few passages for you and then I'm going to share a little bit more and expound upon that a little bit more. So let's get started. I'm going to start by reading um, Matthew 8 verses 23 through 27. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. Mark 4 verses 35 through 40. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the waves died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked the disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Where is your faith? In the age of a pandemic, national, natural disasters, rampant injustice, and sin permeating the world, we are left in survival mode, white knuckling and clinging on to anything that we can. If I had a conversation with Jesus today, I know he would ask me those same four questions after he hears what's going on in my heart and in my mind. We've arrived at campus now, we've been here for a few weeks, and so we're already kind of in the rhythm of going to classes, working different jobs, holding leadership positions, maybe being an athlete, um, being in relationships, and also trying to take care of ourselves and sustain our relationship with the Lord all at the same time. I don't know about you, but I am afraid of a lot of things. <laughs> Some of my fears are more rational than others, but it certainly feels like the wind and the waters are raging in my own life and in the world in general. Sometimes when I think about faith, I boil it down to a really simplistic saying from one of my favorite Christmas movies, The Santa Claus. Seeing isn't believing, believing is seeing. Now there's some validity to that really cute phrase that that little boy says when he shakes that snow globe but I think I need a better definition of faith in my life that doesn't come from a kid's movie. For me, faith is complete trust. Faith is believing that everything has purpose and nothing is wasted. Faith is a verb and something that you do. Faith is knowing that you do not need to know. Faith is persistent and persevering, even if not always entirely confident. Faith reminds me of a trust fall where you're waiting to see if you're actually going to be caught or dropped, but really hoping that you'll be caught. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie The Shack. Um, I've seen it twice, um, so not a ton of times, just, just twice. But there's a scene in that that stuck out to me um, when I watched it the first time. So the main character is in a boat with Jesus and is working on having complete faith and trust in him. As soon as he takes his eyes off of Jesus, the water turns black and begins to fill the bow, and then the boat begins to sink. Jesus says to the man, as long as you keep your eyes on me, nothing can hurt you. It's really hard to keep your eyes on Jesus with everything going on in our lives in this world. 
And I really want to keep my eyes on Jesus um, today and tomorrow and every day. Now, there are going to be so many situations and challenges in the remaining um, parts of the semester and the school year that we cannot possibly anticipate. There will be moments that test us, and Satan will use whatever he can to make us doubt in the power and sovereignty of our God and turn from him. But as believers in Christ and in his word, we have a firm foundation, an anchor for the soul that we can count on. He will equip you, he will strengthen you, and he will guide you. He will be our Emmanuel, our God with us. He may guide you into uncharted waters, but he will not let you sink. So here's my question for you as we go about the rest of this week and as we go about the rest of the semester. Where is your faith? Are you looking to human beings and the things of this world to sustain you and help you cope? Or will you fall into the arms of the one who sees you, knows you, and loves you all the more? We each have a choice to make every day of where we put our faith. Now, I am praying for you as you go about the rest of this week and this semester, and as you learn to surrender your lives and your days and your jobs and your relationships to the Lord every single day. Because it's something that we have to do every day, right? We don't just wake up one day and decide to trust Jesus. We have to do that every single day and always be laying down um, our pride and our burdens and our identities to put our trust and our identity in Jesus. So let me pray for you really fast, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for sustaining us. Thank you for being our Emmanuel, our God with us, the one who sees us, knows us, and loves us all the more. Jesus, I pray that you strengthen our faith, that you help us persevere in the midst of trials and tribulation and doubts. I pray that we find safety to ask our hard questions and explore our doubts in this community. I pray that we will surrender our burdens that we are carrying to you and that we will keep our eyes on you today and every single day and remember that we are your children made in your image and that we can trust you. I pray all this in your powerful and holy name. Amen. Thank you.